What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode, episode six of the Hockey Edmonton Show. I'm YouTube Trav, and along me or alongside me today, Jeremy Hollischuk. How are you doing today, Jeremy? I am doing well. Yeah, six episodes in. It's uh, crazy. We're happy that yes, people are finding this informative and enjoying it. So yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, it is crazy. It's flown by and it's been fun and we've got a lot of good positive feedback from it so yeah, absolutely jeremy yeah. was away last week but he's back better than ever this week uh, we're going to be shedding light on community programs within edmonton this week and so uh, it's going to be a good episode we're going to have tyler hennessy kc north parish manager joining us at 9 25 uh, Mark Abby, I believe I'm pronouncing these all right. Casey Sabres president. And then to finish the show, we got Brad Butterfield, Southwest Zone president as well. So we're going to have some conversations with them, shed some light on the programs and just, uh, yeah, get some information. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to those conversations. It's going to be a good one. Um, as always, uh, leave a like, leave a like, guys. We're, we're having fun with this. Drop a comment down below. If there's a future episode, we're always listening and uh, tuning in to the comments as well. So if there's something you'd like to, to see us feature, for sure, drop a comment down below as we read every single one. But uh, yeah, without out of the way, before we do get our first guest, Tyler, uh, the season, the season's, uh, it's, it's away. It's, it's started. And uh, there's a lot to talk about, Jeremy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, as as we had last week, Joel talking about our elite uh, uh, group on on the episode. We had our AEHL showcase here this past weekend that was very uh, very well uh, attended. A lot of great hockey, um, and it's not just at the elite hockey level. It's all the way down. We are getting into the season both in our elite stream as well as our community programs. Uh, this weekend, uh, we have another. Great event here, our OEG Cup for the U13 AAA guys. So, again, a lot of hockey starting up here. And, again, it's just that first week of October, we had a uh, less than stellar Euler game on Wednesday night. And, um, Are you kidding me? That's a sign. That's a sign the hockey is well on its way that the Oilers are playing. Oh, gosh. All of our clubs and community go uh, groups are going on. Uh, so yeah, hockey season's definitely in full force now. So absolutely, yeah. It was uh, did you, you tune in a little bit last night's game? It was kind of. Ugh. I did a little bit, and uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, one game, and it's the Stanley Cup isn't awarded on October seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth. It's very good point. Uh, awarded in June, so again, lot, lots of season to go here. So lots but, of season yeah. to go, lots of hockey to play. You saw what they were able to do last year, and uh, you, you saw after just one of the worst, I think it was their second worst start in franchise history, and then they almost did it. So yes, hockey is well underway, and uh, yeah, you had mentioned Joel. Shout out Joel. He absolutely crushed it on episode five of the Hockey Edmonton Show. If you haven't seen that, you can uh, deep in or dive into the archives because he brought, he shed some light on the elite uh, hockey programs that we have here. And it was good, man. No better guy to, to talk about it than Joel. No, for sure. Uh, we're very blessed to have him working for us. One of the best in the industry. Again, you go by through all of his uh, credentials. Again, talk about great people in our organization. Definitely one of them and a, a really good benefit and asset for all of hockey in Edmonton not just the elite he does work with our community programs as well so again the knowledge he has on coaching uh, we definitely utilize that in our organizational plans as well as working with our organizations to deliver that exceptional expe exceptional experience for sure yeah no absolutely um, so yeah you had mentioned the community programs earlier and uh, I guess we can dive into it now uh, how many are there in Edmonton? Like, you want to yeah, shed some light on that? Yeah, for sure. Our community programs, we have 17 different community organizations providing opportunities wow. to our participants. And again, when sometimes when we talked about hockey myth busting earlier on a few episodes ago, um, you know, we talk about how the elite stream kind of paints a picture for all of hockey. Well, that's not true. Again, 17 different community programs. So we have a place for folks to play close to their home. Uh, nearly 90% of our participants play in our community programs. Again, want to shed light on the importance they, uh, they do, uh, the important work they do in providing that opportunity for players to participate. Again, it's from U7 to U11. This is everybody's first opportunity to participate in the game they're participating at their community levels so again that first step into the game is likely going to be your community programs 
Um, once you get to U13 all the way up to U18, then yes, you do have that stream. You can choose to go the elite side of it, or you can continue to play in the community side. And we'll highlight, again, a lot of the benefits of playing on the community side as we go through this episode. But again, opportunities and flexibility in how you want to play. And again, flexibility in how you want to play the game. We both have non-body checking and body checking options. We have, you know, your basic or your competitive options. Again, we'll go through some of that toward the end of the program. Uh, and some of the folks will highlight some of their great options that they do have. And again, one of the biggest things that sometimes community programming gets, you know, unfortunately, um, doesn't have the luster of development. Well, it does. Um, you know, a lot of these folks, a lot of our community programs are the program that's going to get you into that uh, elite stream of hockey. They're the ones who are building that foundation for for all of our participants, whether you are starting at the young ages or, again, you can come into a community program at U13, U15. They're going to make sure that you get the, the fundamentals and uh, the development to get you to where you want to go. So, again... You know, in our community stream, we're looking at 18 to 24 practices, or sorry, games per per year. Practices anywhere from 24 to 45. Um, and then a lo- almost all of our community programs have the exact same template. They do have the team building. They have individual team sessions as well as goalie-specific training. So again, the development you get at the community level is very good. And again, it will get you to where you want to be, whether that is starting out at, you know, the youngest levels or coming in a little bit later on, they provide that great development opportunity as well. And again, like I said, they offer a lot of choice here. We talk about at Hockey Edmonton, we have a place for you. This is one of the backbones of that statement is our community programs combined with our elite programs. We have a place for every customer's needs yeah no that, that's the best way to approach that for sure and talking about the flexibility i'm happy you brought that up body checking non-body checking that is actually something that should have been like I, I never heard of that i honestly never heard of that where i like back home that wasn't a thing it was always there was body checking as soon as you hit uh it was peewee at the time so uh, i don't know what the age limit is there but yeah and it, it's just it's such a it, it can make or break, you know, people that want to play hockey. You got to keep in mind the fact that there's certain people that that's not why they, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I can't wait, you know, hitting, we can finally hit people. We can finally body check. But like for people like me, I was very, I was a late bloomer. And as soon as I like, I was like, you know, like four or five and there's, there's early bloomers. And I was just like, and that's essentially what took me out of hockey. Like Trev, you're not having fun anymore. I'm like, I know I get hit. I get injured every single game. People aren't really playing to, to, to score the nicest goal or to have fun. They're playing to, to lay you out. So that is such an integral part. And like, that's huge that you guys are including that. No, it's definitely, uh, you hit the nail on the head. We want to keep people in the game again. uh, We talk about that, that reach your potential. But again, from our standpoint, hockey for life. We want to keep you in the game for life participating. Again, this goes beyond our sport as a whole. You've heard me say it before. Active people, less burden on the health care. Active team, good people, produce a better society. So again, we want to keep you in the game. And that's one of the things that we know. The studies showed it. And since we, us in Hockey Calgary and Hockey Alberta have changed and adapt or adopted body checking, non-body checking, we're seeing an increase in our non-body checking uh, programming. Again, because like you said, people just want to go out there, have fun. And again, remembering the purpose of hockey is to score goals. Uh, You don't get an extra point for having a nice, beautiful open ice hit. You don't get an extra tick there on the scoreboard. So again, keeping people in the game is what we want to do. And again, these options are there. And again, People stay healthy. Again, people aren't injured. That's just providing that great experience for the participants. So again, um, it's a great, great initiative, a great rule change. And again, similar to a lot of change, you know, there there's some growing pains and then there's some, you know, getting used to. But I think since m- many of these changes have gone uh, through, we've seen improvement in the game. You know, I was around when they removed body checking from... Kiwi, and you've seen the improvement in skill. 
the kids' skill has gotten better because that's one less thing they have to worry about when they're trying to learn a lot about the game and such. And there's that big disparity or uh, discrepancy in uh, sizes. Uh, so again, the skills gotten better. When we removed bo- or when we provided this body non-body checking option, and like Hockey Calgary did as well, they both have or we both seen increases in participation and people staying in the game. So again, a lot of great things here with with these options. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, you talk about the development, team building, team sessions, but. Uh, what is it for the goalies? Uh, what, what about the goalies? Can you, can you shed some light on that? Yeah, a lot of our uh, community programs, they bring uh, all their goaltenders together to do, you know, a regular goalie session, whether that's once every couple of weeks, once a month. Um, but yeah, they basically, it's it's a goalie session led by, you know, a, a well-respected goalie person in, in the community. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great goalie coaches out here and goalie schools out here. And yeah, that's what they do. They bring it out there because unfortunately, um, sometimes goaltenders do get neglected in the practice side of it. And again, we have a lot of great coaches and they do a lot of great work. But again, it's easy sometimes to forget that goaltender, goaltending side of it when you're focusing on an entire team dynamic. And again, I've been in that. I was a goalie coach, like I mentioned a few weeks ago. I started as a goalie coach and then migrated to assistant and head coach in that. And when I was practicing or developing my practice plans, I sometimes found it hard to remember to include the goaltenders on there. So again, our goal, our community programs are offering this opportunity to help, again, get the goaltenders some specific training as well, provide that goaltending specific training overall again we know how much that position costs a lot of money in the equipment well here's a way they subsidize uh, or provide a little bit of better or a little bit of value more value for uh, for the buck there by providing this goaltending specific uh, training so again a lot of uh, a lot of good things our community programs do and throughout our system as a whole not just the community side but again our clubs as well um, really really take the development to heart, and it's a focus of what we do here. Sweet, you're bringing it today, Jeremy. You're absolutely oh, you bringing it. But uh, I think our first guest uh, is uh, is ready, so we'll we'll bring him on right now. I'll send this over. We were our uh, one producer isn't sh- ah there we are. Okay, we're we're good. And now I just got to unmute you here quickly. Sorry about the technical difficulties I'm having. But uh, there we go. Okay, I should be able to hear you. This is Tyler Hennessy. Am I saying that correct? You got it. Okay, let's go. Uh, he is the KC North Parish, Parish Manager. And uh, yeah, how's it going today, man? Thanks for joining the show. No problem. Everything's going well. Yeah, I'm the, the KC North president. I've uh, been the president there for five years now. Um, been on the board for about seven. So basically since my kids started playing U7 hockey. Right on. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, just describe and maybe just uh, shed some light, introduce your organization. Yeah. So KC North Hockey, um, it actually is an amalgamation of two clubs that used to be uh, in the history of Edmonton. So St. Charles Hockey Club and then St. Matthew's Hockey Club. And so what we've worked on uh, over the past few years was to create a a hockey club that allows the ability for each hockey player to play at the, the right skill level. And so by doing so, we, we made our zone bigger, uh, allowed to allowed us to have tiers in, in each of the U9 to U13 categories and everybody can play where they should be playing. It makes it more competitive and more appealing to everybody. Awesome. Yeah. You said made your zone bigger. So is that just more teams or just more tiers? Yeah, so what it was is because St. Charles was its own um, zone and then St. Matthew's was its own zone on one side. It basically cut down on on a street. And so what we did is we combined those zones together um, and it just allowed for for more people and and made us have more hockey teams. Um, And so now we have the ability to have a, a team in each of the tiers. And so what that does is it just opens up the the realm for each player to to play at the with their peers at the right skill level and have that competition within the city and in the league. Perfect. Yeah, I know that uh, that definitely shed some good light there. And again, when we try to sit there and want to bring like competitors together, it definitely helps when you can have a little bit of a bigger base there. And so with our Knights of Columbus program, 
I said this on our very first show. Uh, you guys are in a little bit of a unique situation where you offer basically from, you know, the full spectrum of uh, programming. So can you highlight a little bit of uh, what the community programs you guys offer, or you folks offer over there? Absolutely. Yeah. So we offer everything from our U7 program um, all the way up to this year, U21. Um, and for for the the Saint, the KC North and the KC South programs, we basically operate U7 to U13. And then after that, you move on to the, the Sabres program or the Elite program. Um, from U7, basically from Discovery, so four to six years old, then we move into our U11 group, uh, U9 group, and then a U11 group, and then our U13 group. And so that allows us to basically capture all the kids that want to get into hockey, whether you're learning to skate or whether you have six years experience, seven years experience, we want to capture all those kids and get them involved in hockey and provide that opportunity for them. Awesome. Sweet. Can you, can you talk about how you got uh, involved in this role? Like what, what brought you here? Yeah. So um, I've always been involved in hockey and actually, uh, my family um, has been in Edmonton for a while, and the majority of them have been involved with uh, KC for, geez, the last two, three decades. So uh, it goes back a long time and, and really just want to make sure that I do my part to give back to, to the community where I can. Um, I really take pride in watching kids grow and, and seeing how they, they end up as hockey players, but more importantly, as, as little humans. So uh that's that's what we're here to do is is create some fun along the way while we develop these people into to good individuals so that once their hockey career is done they can think the same and come back and and give back to the community as well no that's that's awesome and that's what we talk about throughout our uh episodes here is how hockey creates great people and it builds a community um so from the knights of columbus organization uh you've you've alluded to a little bit of it it's you know, it's about fun first, but what can people expect from your programs in terms of the commitment, the cost and the development they would receive? Yeah, so we, uh, over the last few years, we started to put a lot more emphasis on development. Um, so first and foremost, we try to make it a, a very competitive uh, pricing point for, we want to make it affordable. We make sure that we have all the, the funding available that people can use just because we want make we want to make hockey inclusive for everybody. So the ability to have everybody come play, whether whether um, it's a first year player or a family of, of five or six that they need to they want to get their kids involved, we make sure that we provide that opportunity to them for them. So some of the things that we we take in is we look to to gather as much ice as possible. Um, as everybody knows, ice is scarce around around the city and. And we really do try to make sure that we get every individual on the ice at least three times a week. Um, and with that, uh, I heard you uh, chatting about it while I was jumping on, but some of the development programs that we offer is we put a lot of emphasis on our goalies. Um, we have created basically goalie development where we want to focus on our goalies all the way from U9, whether they just want to try it. Um, or those that are super into it. And we offer weekly goalie development sessions with a, a external company um, that comes in every single Monday and gets all the kids on the ice that are interested and it's no extra cost to them, um, which is a huge benefit for us. It's a huge benefit for the hockey community because as you mentioned previously, the goalie position is expensive. And, and when you're creating those practices, it's it's hard for coaches that don't know about goalies to get them involved and actually teach them the, the right things. So we want to make sure that we provide that opportunity for them. Um, Casey is awesome. And on top of the goalie development that we provide is the ability to, to use the goalie equipment. So we have uh, at Casey, they offer the ability to use the goalie equipment for free. Um, so if you cannot afford to get your own equipment or you just want to come try it once just to see if you like it, all you got to do is go and sign out the equipment and, and, and you're good to go. Um, and we don't want to exclude anyone in that. And so 
basically if you're U9 and you want to try it out, you're invited. If you're U13 and you've been a player the last six, seven years, you can come try it. And what we want to do is just like get people involved, see if they like it. And if they do, we'll put more emphasis on it. Um, aside from the goalies for our, our development is we also put a lot of emphasis for our teams. So we provide funding for each of our teams to hire external um, development companies to come into their practices and work with their individual teams. On top of that, we do offer weekly development for all of our teams, whether it's like we have two U9 teams going on the ice and they're working on power skating with an external company, or we have someone coming in to work on how to shoot properly with an external company. But we provide that funding to the team so that it's no extra cost for, for our families to, to basically gain those skills to, to make them better hockey players. Awesome. Uh, Tyler Hennessy, KC North Parish president, joining us right now on the H- Hockey Edmonton show. And just uh, one more for you, Tyler. Uh, is there anything else you'd, li- you'd like to touch on regarding your uh, program that we haven't discussed yet? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we have, uh, we've started a few years ago is we offer um, tournaments at the end of the year for U9. Uh, we have a U9 tournament and then we have a U11, U13 tournament. Um, that is at the end of the year. It's such a fun event. Uh, we have so much interest in, in all the teams around uh, Edmonton as well as uh, outside of Edmonton that want to come and join this tournament. It's getting pretty big, and, and so we're excited about that to keep growing that tournament and the ability for people to come and just have a great time. Um, and one other thing that Casey is is really good at is they offer the basically a year-round program, where it, whether it's like uh, conditioning camps, uh, tryouts, uh, the season, and then spring league as well. So Casey is getting into the, the, spring, the spring formation and, and trying to just like bring that community together just to, to continue to keep those people and the kids developing and, and getting better. Awesome, Tyler. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day today, today man. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, great stuff. Have a good one, man. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Tyler. For sure. Right on. That was wonderful. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think one of the things that I, you know, our community programs, we talk about that commitment in hockey as a whole in terms of some people think, well, I have to do go get external power skating, external skills development. Again, we're seeing here with our community programs, again, that one-stop shop that uh, makes life easier to commit to hockey. Again, like like you, uh, Tyler said there, three times a week, well, you're getting all those additional aspects to power skating uh, specifics, uh, shooting, goaltending, all of that. So again, really uh, really evolving in our, in our community programs as well to meet the, the needs of our participants. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we're, we're chugging along here on the Hockey Edmonton Show. As always, guys, drop a comment down below. Show your support. Leave a like. We really appreciate all that. Uh, we're just getting our second guest ready here. Uh, he'll be good in, uh, in no time, surely enough. We got a new producer uh, that's producing the show today. So uh, shout out Hernan. He's doing a fine job uh, as we get away. And I, I, hope, I hope I'm saying this, guys. Uh, I believe I will, but we'll, we'll bring him right away here. And uh, whenever he is ready, just uh, we'll get the thumbs up. But uh, no, it's uh, it's good conversations that we're having, and uh, we're having. I, I love like what he said. Like they want you. Like they're, they're like that's what I really got from Tyler there. Like they like and and you see that with all the programs that they're offering. It clearly shows. It's like no, we're we're going above and beyond. We we want the players, and it's like it's they're not looking at it as like we want the money. They're not looking at we want all these kids as as you know paychecks. That's not what they're looking like. We actually genuinely want kids to, to fill these programs and that, that's like that that's so huge exactly that's the biggest thing we want to we want we all believe in the benefit of hockey and sport as, as a whole again we want to make sure that yes that everybody has an opportunity to play and it was interesting like Tyler talked about the goaltending side of it sometimes even removing that barrier of I don't know if my kid wants to commit to it well, they're offering that opportunity. Here's the pads. Here's the equipment for free. Go out there and try it. And again, it removes one more of those barriers in the game. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I do believe Mark is ready. So we're going to bring him on right now. He is uh, the KC Sabres president. Mark. Oh, sorry. There we go. There we go. Yeah, send her away. Mark, how the heck are you doing today, man? I'm doing great, Trev. How are you and Jeremy doing today? 
Yeah, yeah. We're, no no complaints here. Having a fine show so oh. far. Jeremy's absolutely crushing it. And uh, yeah, this is a good show. Good conversation. As always, that's uh, that's what we're doing here at the Hockey Edmonton Show. So yeah, man, first uh, just introduce yourself and uh, just uh, tell us who you are. Sure. I'm uh, Mark Obi. I'm the president of the KC Savers, which is the house program for U15, U18 at uh, KC Hockey. Right on. Uh, can you, did, you know, go a little bit more into depth and details, just describe uh, and introduce what your organization is? Okay, so at the uh, U15, U18 level, we have, uh, we have a Tier 1, 2, Tier 3 contact uh, side. We also have a Tier 1 to Tier 3 non-contact side. So it's really open to, to whatever level of hockey you want your player to play. So tier one is still uh, is very competitive. It's one level below double A at the contact level. Uh, if you look at tier one non-contact, uh, really high skill level kids, it's a, uh, but it's a great opportunity because if you don't want to play contact, you know, you still have that opportunity to play at a high level. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what would you say separates you guys from competition? Ooh, that's a good question. Like in the last, so I've been president now, this is coming on my sixth season and uh, we've grown from about eight teams total at the, at the U15, U18 to now 16 and I'll say 16 plus one because we now finally have a, a U21 team as well. So separate us. You know what? I would have to say a lot of it is our volunteers. We got a great group of volunteers, a great group of coaches. Uh, they continue to push us to, to work on development like we've we've had now for the last i'd say last four years a goalie, goalie development program this year i think we're going to incorporate a little bit more some coach development and some uh some player development although the players may not like this time it's probably at 9 45 a.m on a sunday morning so hopefully hopefully we can still get a fair amount of interest for that as well no, for sure. And I think one of the things that we talk about, especially at the U15, U18 level, is, again, that opportunity to continue in the game when sometimes, you know, things change in terms of your life, especially at the U18 level. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, me and uh, show favorite Greg Terry, we, we coached uh, Tier 1 U18. And, again, it was a great experience for those kids because they're kind of at the end of their time uh, you know, schooling wise, some of them are looking to go to university, other other avenues and such, and they, they still want to have a good time with their friends. So again, the, the programs that uh, you folks offer at those levels are very, are, are just, you know, well, well run, well uh, needed. So I think you touched a little bit here in terms of a little bit of what the people can expect, but same, uh, same thing we asked Tyler there. So what can people expect from your programs in terms of the commitment, the cost and the development they're going to get? Okay, so first the cost tends to be around around that thousand dollars to about twelve hundred dollars for registration. You're going to get uh, at least one game a week, one practice a week. We do supplement in usually another practice uh, within at the KC arenas, which uh, the uh, the players seem to really enjoy. It's kind of like you're coming home and you get that ice time at at the KC arenas. The uh, the commitment from players. It kind of ranges because from like a, a player playing tier one contact it usually has a pretty high level of commitment and they're going to be there we do understand this is house hockey and and they do have jobs they have girlfriends or boyfriends or just other, or they're playing actually other sports which i'm actually a big proponent of is that i like to see players playing other sports as well so that is the one really nice thing about playing house is that you still have those options to play other sports like if you're into football or into volleyball and basketball at the high school level. No, for sure. And that's what we want to sit there and also encourage that long-term athlete development uh, to make sure that our, our next generations are active adults, right? And again, you know, sometimes we, we get too focused on the sports specialization. And again, the community programs allow our participants to choose different things that they may like as well. You don't have to just be hockey, hockey, hockey. Um, and like I said, you, you highlighted the commitment wise again, two to three times a week. So it is very flexible in, in the opportunities there. So again, this is, this is one of the great options here and why, like we said earlier on, almost 90% of our participants are in this program because again, it offers flexibility to enjoy hockey, but other, other activities. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I uh, I got a heavy, hard hidden question for you, Mark. Uh, sure. I'm just joking. Uh, but what, what is your organization's approach to, to making the game fun, safe, and uh, just enjoyable for all the athletes? Well, for us, I guess it all starts off with, uh, and I was listening to some of the podcasts earlier about evaluations of that. So we're just finishing that aspect, which is by far the most stressful and probably probably most unfun time for most people involved. And so what we've done is use third-party evaluators in this part. Uh, so now we're in the place where at U15, we have our teams built. U18, we're just finishing that off. Uh, big focus when we're talking to coaches, because right now this is when we're finding out when coaches or who wants to volunteer to coach, things like that. Uh, we are lucky at the U18 level, we do have two non-parent coaches who stepped up. So that's great. I think that uh, takes a little bit of pressure off parents. It also feels like, uh, you know, their, their child is going to get uh, somebody's full attention on the ice. The, um, the sorry, the, uh, the fun part of it really comes down to is when you start having your meetings, especially at house hockey, you start having your meetings with your players and with your parents and you get the ideas like, okay, one, do we want to purchase extra ice to have more, to have more practice time? How many tournaments do we want to do? Do we want to do them early? Do we want to do them late? things like that where it comes in. But for the most part, it's really our coaches, the ability to bring that excitement to the ice and just different practices, looking at things slightly different than more, you know, what I think back to when I was a kid, how practices were structured. Uh, it's a little bit more different now. And there's a lot more gameplay within practices, things like that. Sweet. And uh, I hope I'm saying your last name. Is it Mark Obi? Mark? Pretty Am close. I... It's Obi. It's, Obi. Uh, if you I guess it would be Obey. Those uh, Obey. Obey. Okay, that's not bad. Those names. I have a hard time with names. So, yes, uh, Mark Obey, Obi, uh, joining us, KC Sabres president right now on the Hockey Edmonton Show. Uh, just quickly, just want to, I'm, I'm curious about this, um, but what is your organization's approach? Uh, or how are you recruiting some of your athletes? Like, is that a th like, how do you get the players in, essentially? That's a really good question. Like, from growing it from eight to nineteen, from when we first started to now, a lot of that comes down to is the is how our current players have uh, how they've enjoyed this the the program, because really it's you know we could advertise we can do the Facebook advertisements things like that, but really it comes down to is that the hockey community is still pretty small and people talk, and really it's that uh, grassroots kind of having parents talking about us trying to answer as many questions as you can when parents are emailing in, asking about things. But really, it's it's growing with uh, by our players, you know, not just their commitment, but how they're talking to their friends about it, and as well as our coaches as well. For sure. Awesome. And then just, uh, just one last one for you, Mark. Uh, is there anything you'd like to shed some light on regarding your program that uh, we haven't discussed yet? Well, actually, the one thing I was going to add is that uh, we are actually still looking for a couple players. So we haven't filled out our rosters across the uh, the categories, and that's contact or non-contact. So if there are people that are uh, their players still haven't registered and they're thinking, is it too late? You know, if they contact our office, I'm pretty sure we can we can fit them in somewhere. Sweet, awesome, Mark. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out of your uh, your day to join the show. Uh, best of luck to you this season. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have you on again. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, guys. Yep. Have a good one, man. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Sweet. Look at that. Mark's a beauty. Exactly. I like Mark. Yeah. And for sure. And like he highlighted, we still are, are taking registrations here, even though we're in October. Still, if you want to play the game, we can definitely get you in there. And again, like I said, it, it really does highlight that, um, you know, that development side and that, that really that great experience for those that want some different options and a little bit more um, choice in, in their activities. Uh, so again, definitely, um, you know, one of our uh, programs, good programs uh, for that age group. And like I said, KC is a little bit unique in terms of being that full one-stop shop. Essentially, they all work together as, as one organization um, in, in their, in their planning and such, but yeah, you can get your, you know, right from the young group all the way up to U21, you want to be elite, you want to be community, or you want to, you know, be recreational. They have all options for you. Sweet. As we await our next guest, Brad Butterfield, Southwest Zone president, 
He will be on uh, just in a matter of time here as we get him set. Looks like he's having some camera issues. So, Brad, if you can hear us, just reconnect quickly, and then we'll bring you back on. Um, or if uh, our producer, shout out to producer Hernan, if he wants to kick him out, and then he can rejoin. Sometimes there's that issue. Uh, we have a visual issue. It, the, the, the camera doesn't quite connect. But, hey, that's technology. Yep. Sometimes it doesn't work, but you get through it, okay? Exactly. And like I said, yeah, definitely... Um you know, good, good organization. And, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of our, 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 all of our community organizations are very good at what they do. And yeah, it's exciting just to be able to share their stories here. And again, shed light on, yes, the, the quality and great programming that, uh, that we've got in these organizations. No, for sure. This is the hockey Edmonton show. I'm YouTube Trev. This is Jeremy Halischuk as we are wait our next guest, Brad Butterfield from the Southwest zone. Um, yeah, I don't know. This is, uh, we'll be on shortly as, uh, do you want to quickly go to our f final thoughts while we wait or shall we? Well, definitely. And again, what we'll do is actually, yeah, highlight some of the other things that, our, that. our organizations are. Obviously we have some, you know, time constraints in, in our programming. I can't bring all 17 on, but at the end of the day, a lot of our, um, a lot of our community groups are doing a lot of similarly great things there. So again, you know, I look at, for example, our, our confederation hockey for those that are in the South side of the city, um, they offer different streams, uh, of programming. So again, they focus on those that want the, the competitive stream, the community stream and the develop or the, uh, you know, the recreational stream. So again, um, they call it community development and competitive in their stream, but again, offering different opportunities, different, uh, commitment levels and different price points. So again, you know, uh, at the competitive stream, you're going to get a little bit more ice time development. You're going to get a little bit more than the community. So again, you have different options there and choices. So again, you know, uh, highlighting some of the things anywhere from 18 to 24 games, uh, practices, 24, 32, 45, at least. So again, how you want to participate in the game, you have multiple ways to do that. No, well, for sure. Sorry, we're having a little bit of technical issues. Brad Butterfield. Is there a chance we can get Brad on another time? By we, chance. Yeah, we could definitely do that. I because think so. this is the second time he's trying to connect and we are getting no visuals. So might have to postpone Brad's uh, appearance if that's okay. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Sorry about so. that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, sorry about that, Brad. Again, I think we'll definitely have him on. I Absolutely, think you fingers, know. Fingers crossed uh, that there's something in the works with them as well. So hopefully we'll we'll get him on a little bit later on as well. No, for sure. With the name of Brad Butterfield, that is definitely someone I want to talk to here on the Hockey Edmonton Show. And, you know, I tell you what, we'll bring him on. He'll be our first guest, our first star of the show. How's that sound? Perfect. Yes, I like that. And yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, uh, president of the Southwest Zone. So similarly, similar set up as Mark there in terms of offering U18, U15 across the gamut and such. Um, so again, like I said, a lot of uh, great community people and he's he's definitely one of them in their group there. So no, oh, for sure. I, I will just say like, I'm like forever fascinated by all the programs that uh, Hockey Edmonton provides. Like it's actually insane. Like it, it blows my mind. Yeah, exactly. We we have a place for you to play. It's not just a state or saying it's we have different options. Again, like I said, you want to go to your elite. We have a couple of levels in our elite programs, in our community programs. We have a few different options there for if you want to be, you know, that get to that next elite level, there's options there for you. If you just want to play a couple or practice a couple days a week and a game a week, we have an option there for you. If you want to just play games, we have options there for you. So again, a lot of opportunities. Again, body contact versus non-body contact, a lot of great options there. And again, from U7 all the way up to U21. For sure. Yeah, the the it, the programs, like they offer tremendous flexibility. Could you quickly touch on that a little bit? What is the flexibility quickly? Well, I think it, it offers, again, starting with, your options, you know, body contact versus non-body contact. So again, if you're not confident or don't want to play in that system, because again, maybe there is that history of injuries, again, just maybe overall not confident, that's one of those flexible options there. Uh, in terms of, again, going back to some of our, our programming, utilizing our confederation hockey there, um, flexibility in the commitment that you actually have, as well as the cost. So again, you know, under their, a lot of their streams, they have a competitive 
uh, program, which, for example, at their U13 level will be, you know, just over $1,000 um, plus an extra uh, 700 So you're looking about $1,800 there, uh, it looks like. Um, and again, you're going to get more commitment for that. So again, you're playing 24 games per per year. You're playing or having at least 45 practices per year. Uh, you know, there's going to be a, um, you know, team building. You have uh, five um, team development sessions, 12 goaltending sessions. So again, they are putting, you know, if you want that, really that development focus still at the community level, that's an option. You look at their just, uh, their development program. So again, uh, standard, you know, a thousand, you know, you're looking about $1,300 there for that. And again, now you're looking at 20 games per week, 32 practices, two team building, three uh, development and eight goaltending programs. And then again, so again, a little bit less con- or commitment, less cost. And then finally at the community, again, lowest cost, least time commitment, again, just over $1,000, uh, 20 20 games, 24 practices, and then two team building activities. And uh, again, four team development and one goaltending session. So again, like I said, there's a lot of options there for for you in, in terms of different opportunities. And a lot of our programs offer that same type of commitment side. We've, we've actually got a fairly good system there. You know, our tier ones and two teams would be that co- competitive. A lot of our programs then at the tier threes and fours um, are that development and then the, the, the lower commitments at the, you know, at the, the tier fives and sixes. And again, I wouldn't get too hung up on, um, you know, tiering because you have those options to go into the different areas if, if you want. So again, if you don't want a lot of commitment, you have that option. They'll provide you that option. Sweet. This is the Hockey Edmonton Show. I'm YouTube Trev. Alongside me, as always, Jeremy Halischuk. As we are on, uh, you know, I guess, uh, the final stretch of today's show, uh, we're going to dive into the final, sh- the final thoughts. And uh, I guess just if you if you have time to, to register, if, if they're still wanting to register, where can people go? Yeah, definitely. So again, as we've said, playhockeyedmonton.ca, if you're a first time in the game, will help you find that... Uh, that um, you know, community program or recreational program or whatever program you you desire will will find it, help you find that. Um, if you're familiar, again, been in the hockey stream, again, like you, like uh, Mark said, KC Hockey or whatever organization, pretty much reach out to them. They'll get you into the game. And if not, we'll figure out how to get you still into the game. Um, like I said, at the, at the end of the day, our community programs provide those great options. If you want to get in the game, if you want to stay in the game, or if you want to enjoy the game, however you'd like our community programs, um, definitely offer those, those options there. Um, they are the most flexible, uh, way to participate in the game that works for you in an affordable manner. So again, when we look at that confed program that I just highlighted, uh, basically comes down to at the very basic level, $21 per session. So again, uh, when we talk about, yes, you know, you look sometimes at the bottom line, but breaking it down, talked about this earlier that our, our programming per hour is not, or per session is not that much different than any of our other, or any other options out there in terms of activity. So again, a lot of affordability and that's across the board, um, that, that, that affordability is there. And again, like I said, if you want more, we can definitely offer you more in terms of more time commitment and more development. Um, hopefully as we've highlighted here, our community programs, they are still a great development opportunity that part of that provide our participants, the ability to reach the level they want to play. So again, we talk about coach development. So in our SEER program, they have invested significantly in our coach development where they have coach mentors that help, uh, plan practices with the, with potential coaches. They bring in uh, people to mentor and shadow, so we continuously see those uh, those program, uh, those coaches, those quality coaches stay in the program and give back. So again, like I said, sometimes you know there's that stigma that community isn't about development. No, it's the starting point for anybody that wants to get in the game, whether you're at the young age, whether you're at 15 and want to try the game. We're going to get you development wise into the game and get you to the level you want to be. Yeah, and uh, we talked about it at the beginning of the show. Hockey is back. Hockey is well underway. And if you want to support local, support Hockey Edmonton, is there anything coming up? 
Yeah, there definitely is. So right uh, this weekend here going on at the Bill Hunter Arena is our OEG Cup this weekend. So again, you're going to see the best 13-year-olds uh, playing for an opportunity to represent uh, Northern Alberta under the Oilers logo at the prestigious Quebec Pee Wee International Tournament. So again, lots of great opportunity there uh, to to come out and see some very, very good hockey. It's free to to come on in and check it out. We're going again all day. This is on Saturday, so all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday. Uh, head to playhockeyedmonton.ca and uh, under events, you'll see uh, the tab there. Click on uh, OEG Cup and you'll uh, get the schedule there. So again, uh, like I said, um, yeah, I think uh, overall uh, it's going to be a great weekend and a lot of good Absolutely. hockey continuing on this weekend. So Yeah, it's pretty fun. Right on. Well, that pretty well wraps up episode six of the Hockey Edmonton Show. As always, I'm YouTube Trev, joined by me. My my co partner my or my co host my partner in crime Jeremy Hollis Chuck, uh, this was a, this was a good episode we had a lot of fun with it I uh, just want to say one more time apologies to Brad I promise we will bring you on because uh, that I mean you were supposed to be on so technology happens we really do apologize if you can hear us uh, we'll have you on as soon as we can does that sound good Jeremy that definitely sounds good we'll definitely have Brad on there and then sure. any final words from you. I uh, know at the end of the day, like I said, you know, we talk about the commitment of hockey and such. I hope so far in the last couple of episodes that, uh, you know, we've we've shown that, yes, we can provide that one stop shop opportunity for uh, for people to get all the development they want um, at price points they 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 feel comfortable with and commitment that they feel comfortable with. So, again, it's not you don't have to all of a sudden play on one of our teams and then have to worry about, oh, I got to go to power skating. I've got to go to skill sessions no we provide it all for you in a in a nice tight package again um, making the game easy to participate in whichever way you want to with the commitment that you want to that fits your situation absolutely and that's what it's all about you brought it today jeremy great job <laughs> yeah that was a fun yeah. i had a fun show this was a lot of fun eh? yeah this was yeah definitely and like i said yeah i think it's highlights. hockey's back man We're exactly 80 like i said most of our participants this is this is great uh you know to highlight uh programs that most of our participants participate in and again really shed low you know shed some light on some great community work that's being done here with some tremendous volunteers uh, organizationally. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of those great things to highlight. And it was a good show today, I think. It was episode six coming to a screen near you. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We had a lot of fun with this. As always, drop a comment down below. Why? Because we read every single one. And uh, feel free to leave a like because uh, it is free. And might as well show your support because we had one hell of a show today. So thanks for everyone tuning in. The Hockey Edmund Edmonton Show. This was just a great conversation with both Tyler and, and Mark as well. Uh, great conversations all season long. We can't wait for episode seven coming next week. And a uh, huge shout out to Hernan producing. There's nothing this guy can't do. Huge shout out for Jeremy. Great show. That, that pretty well wraps it up. Uh, take her easy, guys. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the next one.